Yes, hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Sean McGuinness podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, which I advise you to go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel, obviously, for the sake of your results and to get some good info. We're recording this now in the new part of the office, so this designated podcast area of the office where you have a nice little couch. And um, when I can get guests back in, I'm excited to set that up. So, yes, thank you for the feedback on last week's episode as well. That's definitely going to help a lot of people. So I really recommend go re-listen to that. It's probably one of the most common things I talk to clients about on a regular basis is just setting up their environment. We just have to always understand that when it comes to fat loss, you're not at a disadvantage because without certain evolutionary uh, mechanisms you probably would not be here watching this on youtube so we've evolved for a reason and for evolutionary biology is an amazing topic when you kind of like thinking why do we do this why do we do that there's always an answer for it in bio in evolutionary biology how we've evolved and that's going to tie into today's episode. So when I've talked about last week, how to set up your environment, it's because our brain is primed to seek out high calorie food. So if you have that in your environment, your kind of reptilian um, limbic brain is going to preference that. And you alone, I don't care how much willpower you think you have, you're not going to uh, outsmart our own hardware that has evolved over millions and millions of years. Um so that set up your environment that way food wise um so if you're trying to think of it the way i explain is how can you set up your environment in a way where you don't even need any willpower so you're just creating a smart environment that you don't have to because if there's temptations okay yeah you might be a little bit motivated at the start of a plan and a bit more enthusiastic but that's going to wear off and then when life hits for example, we're in a pandemic at the moment. <laughs> so there's always going to be something coming up. You're going to be tired, work, blah, blah, blah. So you need to prepare for those moments. Don't think they'll never happen. Or or it's a cognitive bias to kind of think, oh, I'll be fine when it comes to it. But that's why I learned what hasn't worked in the past. And I'm going to assume the majority of people can't have high-calorie food around. So get out of your environment and make it easier on yourself. leads us on perfectly today because last week we talked about food this week we're going to have a look at environment um an evolutionary biologist i think he's a professor at harvard his name is dr daniel lieberman and i've recently been coincidentally got into a lot of his stuff talks about a lot of how we run at hunters how we move uh, he ties it into moving aspect how we were oh, i can't remember the name off the top of my head pre, uh, pre it's on the top of me tip of my tongue pre, pre something mm, uh, hunters it will come back to me basically it meant we we're never going to out sprint animals in the savannah i think um, a normal like zebra, so I mean, it's twice as fast as Usain Bolt. So we're never going to out sprint it. But what we did is animals can't really sweat properly, so they have to stop and then they have to pant, and that's how they they get rid of body heat. They don't have any sweat glands, so we came up with the concept. We would basically just run that run slash walk slash jog the animal down. So. We would kind of chase it a little bit. It would obviously sprint off being much faster ahead. But at a certain point for it to pant, it can't pant while it's running. So it would stop, it would pant, and at that moment, whatever, we would jo run again. Until eventually it would just overheat. And I think we would just jog and walk and run a medium pace. I don't know, like 10k, I think he said the average was. So in, in that terms, and if you fit, and then it would just collapse Um it would just collapse, it would just overheat and collapse. So we've evolved a certain way and he talks about then how we move and how a lot of our joints, Achilles and um, IT band, IT band, 
and the like calcaneus the heel all this stuff has evolved for us to run so although when you're saying this you might go well sean you advise us not to run i advise the overweight people not to run because that's a different story you're going to have extra stress but recently i've been having chats with um a mentor with nigel probably one of the best physio physiologists i know and he says yeah if you get someone in a position to run it can actually be very good for the hips and he cites um these evolution biologists so it comes full circle anyway the point on that he talks about our activity and he just we're, he dispelled one of the myths that sitting is the new smoking so we obviously hear everyone's sitting and that's good reason we're obese and he actually said well if you look at cultures all around the world they sit for the same amount of time as us they probably sit about eight hours a day whether it's the tribes in the hadza which they have in tanzania i think one of the oldest surviving tribes they still have to study so that they do a lot of research on that and they sit down the same amount obviously on the ground they don't have office chairs but they're sitting around chatting um if you look at like apes who are close ancestor they sit down like i don't know nine hours or 12 hours they're awake so yes however what he does so so basically he brings it back to this and he says okay the same way we are hardwired to preference high calorie food we're preference to conserve energy so we we're kind of inherently lazy the same way i always joke about intuitive eating i said if you if you intuitively eat you will become obese there's no intuitively eating um, and losing fat people that may track their calories over years and years their intuitive eating is not intuitive it's actually more habitual that's what we want to get to so when we talk about we're inherently lazy we kind of are and he put up a slide there's a picture i don't know if you've seen where it's a gym and it has I think it's a 24 fitness in America and has stairs on one side and has the escalators on the other. And the escalators are packed going up to this. It's only like one, uh, it's only about 20 steps, but people are still standing on the escalator. So we're primed to conserve energy from a reproductive point of view and a survival point of view. And that's that's tied into who we are. So when we understand what I'm trying to say, when we understand our evolutionary um, biology why our body works a certain way why we do things it makes it first of all it takes the emotion out of fat loss because you're like well i'm designed to eat these foods i'm de- designed to kind of sit around be a bit lazy and then it takes out any emotional attachment to that guilt shame feel bad we can always um not justify it but come back to the logical reason of why that happens secondly when we understand like i said last week about the manual of the human body we then can construct a plan that's going to work with that rather than against it so kind of old old school thinking when it comes to fat loss is uh you just need more discipline and you just need to go training and yeah that's true but i don't know if anyone we can all attest to this how especially if it's not habitual how hard it is to get up and go training because your body just wants to sit around and do fucking nothing i can definitely attest to this during lockdown i find it very hard um to go out and get my steps in train just leave like i'm comfortable (laughs) i'm comfortable in my little office my little studio i have my little coffee maker which i have here i'm kind of set up here so I can definitely, and then you'll feel the difference energy-wise, etc., etc. If we are inherently lazy, it's not a good idea to then rely the same way we did last week on willpower and self-discipline, self-control, because the odds are low. The house is going to win. I'm going to say the house is your body, and it means you're not going to lose weight, so you lose. Yeah, ironically. So what we need to do is construct an environment that makes us move more so he talks about we only move for two reasons probably not to get food so for purpose or for play in today's world we could probably put like going to work as purpose so it has to be purposeful 
um, driven. I, I the times I was my steps counter to the roof, for example. I was walking into work and that would be my routine and I would have a goal, I'd have a place I'd go to and it would make it much easier Then I would enjoy it and I'd walk back. I have somewhere to go but when you don't have somewhere to go it's very hard. So when we look at an obesogenic environment we're, we're trying to create the opposite, we're trying to create a healthy environment that's involved and um, that's going to guide us basically to lose fat. So when I think of this I think of creating an environment in regards to activity that makes us move more rather than us having to rely on conscious thought to do that. So we set up an environment that we naturally move more. And we're going to talk about a few different ways of doing this. All this activity, like you probably heard before, is referred to as NEAT. It's non-activity, non-exercise activity thermogens. Excuse me. It basically means all the activity we're doing outside the gym. When it comes to fat loss people, they only look at the hour or 45 minutes they're in the gym and they have that whole session planned out. And yes, it's important. There's no doubt about that. Okay, I'm going to have five or 10 minutes of mobility. I'm going to do some weights. I'm going to do some cardio. I'm going to fit it all in there. But then they forget the 23 hours out of the gym, what they're doing activity-wise. And they've seen now your neat racks up a lot a lot a lot of calories to give you an example someone that sits at home all day they may burn 300 calories then we can compare that to say like a trades person or um, they've linked that to when people were more in the agriculture revolution where people were working on farms that will be 2300 calories so that's a massive difference a lot of the time People think of metabolism, either slow metabolism. Um, no, it's just because you probably don't move enough. Then they're like, oh, when I, I'm getting older, my metabolism slowing down. No, compared to your activity now to when you're younger, you're not moving enough. So our need can comprise 15 to 50% of our overall calorie burn each day. A large portion of that's going to be your metabolic rate, but we're not in control of that. So we're in control of our needs and then the exercise when we do train to burn calories that's what we need to focus on so there's a massive different um, difference and it really comes into play especially if someone is on a lower calorie intake as like they're not they're not that big say a 50 kilo person female a lot of time their calorie intake may be 1400 calories to lose fat that could be even less, could be 1,200, like if they're not moving that much. Well, if that person was in there on the, working a trade, they could have add 2,300 calories on top of that and still lose weight. So we're trying to maximize our calorie burn. Most people prefer to move more and then eat more. So um, that's where we want to do it anyway. And even if, if you're not, not concerned with fat loss at all, this is still linked to health, calorie burn, um, and a sense of fitness in a way. So again, you're probably asking, how can we measure need? Well, I've mentioned roughly step counts. Step counts, Fitbits, anything that measures, that's probably the best way to, to look at our need, look at our overall activity. In regards, step count, how many calories that burn, it's going to, uh, it'll be different depending on how tall people are, small, how heavy they are. But on average, 2,000 steps burns around 100 calories. Okay, So if, for example, you're doing 10,000 steps, you're going to burn about 500 calories. And 500 calories is probably two gym sessions. So most people don't burn that much in the gym. So that's two gym sessions. So if someone's did a hard session, 250, 300 calories in the gym, and then sat down the rest of the day, well, you could have avoided going to the gym if your goal was to burn calories, and then just done your 10,000 steps. Thus, you don't have to go to the gym, and then hopefully you've, what we're going to talk about is you naturally set your environment in a way that you didn't even notice you are moving. That That's always that's the goal we're going to try to get to. If uh, 15,000 steps, for some people that can do that, 750 calories. That's a massive difference in, in regards if someone's on a smaller deficit. 750 calories of food, if you're on a diet, is massive. 
and then some crazy people do 20,000 steps they might I know people I train site manager he's 20,000 steps every day that, that's a thousand calorie difference between the same people so now we kind of know some of the benefits what do we do about it so I've just mentioned we're trying to forget about willpower and set environment in the same way. Now I can hear you screaming in the back of your phones and your headphones already. Sean, I get the train to work. I drive to the train station. I get the train to work. My job's beside the train station. I go sit down for eight hours a day and then I come back. I'm, I don't have any room to move. And I once had a client say this to me. I said, okay, you drive to the station. Can you drive to the station before you normally get it and walk? Okay. So we might get a thousand steps there. So before you go to work, can you get up this get off the station one stop before? Okay. We might have a thousand steps there, probably more. So we do that twice a day. Say that's four thousand steps, for example. It's probably gonna be more, four to eight thousand we'll say. Cool. Can you get up more at work? Can you get a walk at lunch? We basically racked up, I think, eight to ten thousand easy just doing some some things like that. And again, it was purposeful. So she drove, and then, and then she had to walk to the station. Okay, her mind's getting to work. Get off the station before walk there, and you could make your mind up for so. The stuff I have written down here is the same way. Is can you? Can you park further away from the station? Can you get off a stop earlier? Can you get off a stop later and walk back? It doesn't really matter. Two stops. What can you do to kind of make up? I'm, on average, I would recommend people hit anywhere from like eight to 10,000. As we said, it's, it's individual. So if you want more food in your calorie deficit, if you're on a smaller deficit, well, then you have the option of moving more as well. Can you, like we use the example of people, drive to the gym and then get the escalator? Well, when you're doing your shopping or if you drive to the gym or um, drive to get your shopping, can you park further away from the shops? You don't have to get the stop right next to the door. As we said, I'm not judging because that's kind of how we're primed. Everyone's always, everyone's always waiting 20 minutes for that stop right beside the door. <laughs> and then beeping at each other, then your head's going to be wrecked because you need to go into five fights to get your weekly shop obviously can you get the stairs instead of the escalators you might even say something i'm never getting escalators never getting the lifts um we have some options here for those for an ergonomic uh, working situation we'll talk about can you take if you're on the phone or whatever can you take or in when you're back in office someone was on to meet and cool can you ask can we do the meeting while we're walking can we do a walk and meeting can you do a walk and meeting on the phone we're going to have a look at this uh, social aspect and how to make that fun as we said this is the way we move and then the other kind of stuff we're going to burn a lot of calories is through chores errands cleaning up cooking again ironically we're getting so busy now that we don't move and then we pay someone to do all that all that stuff does burns a lot of calories So, if we go back to the old days, you might think of the traditional housewife and they're burning a lot of calories doing cleaning up, cooking, lots and lots of calories. I'm just thinking back memories. Louise showed me a video of when she was small in Poland and her, her, her mother was there. They own, it was a farmland. Her mother was there and then her grandmother and her great-grandmother was there as well. And they're non-stop, they're picking potatoes, they're picking veggies, they're chopping. They're it's very purposeful, which makes it easy, but they're non-stop. Um, obviously, at times they do stop, like we said, but such hard labor to burn a lot of calories. And they're all in shape and they look great and I think they live to ninety mid-90s. So, yeah, it kind of is like, alright, if these people are looking that healthy at that age... 
Mm, maybe do the same they do as they do. So we're trying to move as much. Now let's just look uh, briefly at if you uh, have to work, what can we do to kind of maximize and um, the calorie burn while we're at work, whether it's at home or whether um, it's in the office. Obviously, the office idea seems strange for us because we're still in lockdown, we're institutionalized here, so um, yeah, it's gonna be the same thing. Okay, you're gonna think I'm a bit mad. There's a thing now, well, first of all, we have standing desks, so have, we have one here. And I don't think, I've, I've the calories written down here, I don't, it's not that big of a difference, see, the standing, I think it's only, it's, uh, I think it's an extra 10 calories per hour. So that could kind of equate to 100 calories, but where you do burn more calories is the sitting and standing. So when you sit and stand up or you move around, that's going to burn way more than just standing there because nothing has been going on. Like There is an idea now, and I can't remember who brought it about. It was one of these guys, I think one of these evolution biologists that I've looked at, someone's already painting it, obviously he made a lot of money off it and I can see it getting even more popular I sent it to one of my clients last week and she sent back all these crying laughing faces and I said no I'm, I'm dead serious it is called the treadmill desk now bear with me so it's just a standing desk make your own and then you would just get like a little cheap treadmill I don't know, you get them two, three hundred dollars, hundred, hundred, two hundred euro, um, just the bottom of it you need, and just try it under. And they said here, now obviously you're not going to put it on brisk walking pace and try to type at the same time because that probably end a disaster. I think around one mile per hour, so literally hardly anything, but that burns eighty extra calories per hour, so one hundred and fifty compared to, um. 70 of sitting we, but over the course of the day so eight hour a day that's 640 calories you're going to burn extra and that over the course of the week is probably a little bit more than um your 3500 calorie deficit which equates to you losing half a kilo a week okay so that alone without changing your food nutrition without changing nutrition calories to eating less you've just expended 640 calories more over the course of the day, which again is like three, two gym sessions. That alone, without leaving the house. So, drastic times call for drastic measures in the sense that if you are really, really can't leave your desk all day, you can't do sporadic activity, especially you're in lockdown. I've had clients that just get up, go straight to the desk and stay there for eight to 10 hours a day. And if you're looking for a way to kind of take the self-control willpower out of it you find it very hard to train at home well bang you just do this one mile per hour and then you are burning a lot of calories over the course of the day i think you can get the same with a bike as well and just put the bottom half of a bike to get some activity on there so yes that is something to look at as well we are obviously the product of our environment, so we need to look how is our environment set out. If your environment is set out with lots of food and little activity, well, it's you're not going to be in good shape. Where if your environment set out for you to move more naturally, um, kind of think for like a hamster wheel where you just like putting yourself in a situation you don't have a choice where you have to move more. And then you're not really thinking about it. Combine that with the good fuel environment. Well, that's gonna you're gonna look very good. Okay. Other main aspect of being human is the social aspect. Andrew Daniel Lieberman, sorry, Dr. Daniel Lieberman talks about the same. We are the purpose movement or play. The other one's play. So it's a massive component. It's one which is to really damage to all those lockdowns and stuff and um, especially for most introvert people that like their own time such as myself we talked last week about looking at those around us how they helping or hindering our plan 
and we talk briefly about just changing the activities changing the situations where we might socialize i'm going to use the same things in today's podcast when you're looking at socializing it doesn't have to be go for a drink or go sit down even more because you're sitting down enough why can't you socialize and um, go and do a dance class or go and do a gymnastic class or pole dancing or um i don't know what else rollerblading what I'm trying to think of all the stuff we do as kids they have everything these days they have everything adult versions of all these kid games so why don't you go and do that? I think you can get a coffee after or whatever, meet, sit down after. But go and do activity, have fun together, um, have a laugh. All this stuff from a chemical, brain chemical point of view is going to be brilliant. Oxytocin, serotonin. And then if you're looking like a holistic plan, when, you're, when we feel connected and we feel happy and we've done all this kind of stuff, you're less likely to turn to food anyway from an emotional point of view because you've satisfied all those needs and you've burned calories why can't you um meet up and go for a walk i do know one of our good friends and clients cat one of her friends who was kind of a bit of a rut um, last year well the only chance he has to socialize now is to walking so although he put on a bit of weight before i seen him last week i said jeez he looks great he dropped heaps of weight because he's just walking to socialize so that's his purpose and play and he's racking up the steps and for for someone i think that didn't like exercise well he barely notices that he's exercising because he's moving and socializing and has all these things same as what we used to talk about um uh, habit bundling where you just you'd combine something that you find very hard with something that you like same thing so i used to always get people to if they're doing some cardiovascular activity on the stepper or the elliptical you watch a Netflix show while you're doing it and associate that with something positive and you won't feel like you're doing it. If I clients finish Netflix series, which is great because um, racking up the calorie burn and improving the health at the same time. So yeah, have a think. What what other stuff can you do? Can you go hiking, bushwalking? Can you, can you socialize that way? The list is endless. There is no right or wrong answer anything that's going to get you to have a good time and move at the same time that that's brilliant hobbies and um, hobbies are obviously great people now especially in the fitness industry and myself included where we get so on top of them training and everything serious and driven but then we forget any hobbies and from from social aspect and play aspect well that's not good you need something to to have there so um i i joined jiu-jitsu um, definitely recommend that especially from like w- what i was talking about we're trying to save our joints which is just a brilliant way to, to do that as well because you're not going to get injured so um any martial arts jiu-jitsu socialize that way bring a friend and go to go to these classes is why we, we i'm actually literally looking on the centennial park the biggest park in sydney and although there's some trade-offs sometimes the cycling which i've talked about before in regards to postural aspects that need to be you probably need to it's a trade-off when you do that but you need to correct that with proper gym work and we had certain muscles get very tight that are already tight from sitting down and then crunching over and backs etc but from a social aspect like i can feel the connection when we go into the park of groups of cyclists and uh, may may not be the biggest fans of from drivers <laughs> but most of the days they don't let they don't let traffic into the park but when i see them then they do the cycle and they have coffee after and they're having a laugh brilliant lots of group classes do this as well trying to turn it's hard to say trying to turn kind of exercise into fun there's a time and place for more serious work and i know diehard fitness people will be turning in the grave or they're hitting their phone when they hear that but we we again we have to look at the manual of way we've kind of evolved people find exercise hard um, and they don't have a good association with it so the gyms i've enjoyed the most and when i've been in commercial gyms it creates that community itself and that's the thing that gets people to come back so that in turn is becoming funny yeah if you're a serious trainer you might go in but it's gonna be a bit old if you don't talk to anyone so how can you combine both worlds? How can you combine the fun aspect, the social aspect, 
um, in a way that you're going to burn calories. And then maybe if it's coincided with your weight training within that, um, it's obviously why CrossFit's become popular, although not probably optimal for most people, but that side of it, they've done very well. So yeah, I'm always, actually the, the, the gym I worked for in Dublin, where I had Damien on who owns that, that was a perfect mix. It was a semi-private training where they'd have their social connection, but it was individualized in a way that um, everyone got good results. So they hit both out. Unfortunately, most people, places that aren't like that, but um, it's slowly, I know there's a place in Sydney with my two Irish lads. Oh my God, I'm forgetting the name. And um, where Louise went there for a bit and said it was a brilliant Sam Lab, Strength and Movement Lab in Alexandria. So yes, Anyway, I've waffled on a bit. What I'm trying to say is, you know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. So, that is all I wanted to get across today. We're in a obesogenic environment. You have to look at yourself and say, what can you do to create an environment that's going to help you get lean or guide you to get lean? You're probably going to have a lot of excuses in regards to activities because, again, as we said, we're inherently lazy, but when you be honest with yourself and look in the mirror there's 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 so many places that you can use extra calories without even noticing it in your day because imagine you get the majority of your all your calorie burns just from purposeful from a daily basis it saves you having to go and bank cardio out at six o'clock at night when you'd rather be at home you've done all that you don't have to then spend extra time you kill two birds with one stone so that is all I want to get across with that. All these ideas are coming back. I'm doing a lot of research. I'm going to release um, an ebook, hopefully in the next month or two. Nearly finished finish all the written content. We'll do up all the graphics and stuff and make it look pretty. But I'm just trying to do it in a way. Every nutrition thing I read is it's very it's complicated for the general pop person. They have no idea, and then they turn to maybe more simplified diets where it's like oh just cut out carbs fast i get why people do it they just want a simple answer to a complex problem and then when people are giving them complex answers it doesn't help so um it's a nutrition e- ebook where we talk about all this stuff how to set your environment in a way and different foods and how to give you what you need to know strategy wise to include social events uh, and it's one that even my parents could understand that's my goal with this so I'm going to have to give it to a lot of people to proofread to start off to make sure it's simplified in a way that you can get it and give you all the strategies and tips that you need to reach your goal. So there we go. Hopefully you found that interest and it definitely is. gives you some um, food for thought to set up your environment in a way. I would love to hear about how you're going to set your environment up. Um, send me a message on Instagram and obviously if anyone has any questions send me a message on instagram or seanlivelongperformance.com and yes that is me for another week can't wait till next week's episode already and i will talk to you then